What is going on guys? Welcome back to the C++ tutorial series. In today's video, we're going to talk about strings. So let us get right into it. So we already talked about strings when we talked about data types and we said that they are the uh, text data type. And in today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about the different functions, about the different things that we can do with strings. And we're also going to talk a little bit about the history of strings. We're going to compare C strings to C++ strings. Uh, because the important thing here is that even though we're coding in C++, uh, we can still use C code and we can still use C libraries because sometimes we're going to encounter uh, modules or libraries that we want to use or we have to use that are written in C and in C there is no string class. So in C++ what we can do is we can just say std string my text and we can say this is now my text and I can assign hello to it and I can work with it. And this string thing here, this my text is a string object. This is uh, an object, an instance of a class string. Whereas in C, we didn't have any classes, we didn't have any uh, objects, we only had primitive data type structs and so on. So we had to come up with a different way of storing strings and strings in C were just uh, arrays of characters. So the basic thing that you do in C in order to create a string is you say character. Uh, and then you say, for example, text and an array. So you make a character array, this says it's an array. We talked about arrays already and we can say now, okay, this array has 10 positions and we can say this is just hello like that. And the important thing is here on a lower level, we can say that actually, even if we say 10, we are actually allocating one more because we also need to have the backslash zero. I think it is the null, uh, null terminator that says, okay, this word is now over. And those are now the C strings. So essentially what we can do with them is of course we can print them out. We can say C out text is just a character array that's initialized like that. Um, and then we can say STD end line and we can go ahead and run this. And you're going to see that we get hello as a result here. Good. So this is one way to do that. You can also say character uh, or actually let's say character text 10. And then we can say text zero equals H. I mean, actually we need to use single quotations here, H. And then we can say uh, this one here is E. And then the third one we could say is Y. So we have the word, hey, we can do it as uh, like that as well. So we just have to compile this here. And you can see that we have, hey, but we also have uh, the other uh, characters here as well printed out because we have 10 slots. We can also say we want to have three slots and then we can just create this uh, simple C string here. Uh, what did happen here? Oh, I think we didn't add a null terminator, so it doesn't know where to stop. I'm not sure if that's the problem, but we could actually say four and we can say text three equals, I think it's back, uh, backslash zero, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see if that's true. And we get, yeah, I forgot the semicolon. But now we get hey as a result. And if I run this again, we should also get hey as a result, yes. So it's important that you also specify the null terminator if you do it manually. If you do it like that, if you do a direct assignment, uh, I think you don't need to do it, uh, or actually we can say three. Uh, I think you don't need to do it uh, manually because by nature what happens here, it's too long. Oh yeah, okay, we need to allocate four in order to store three because then it can add an null terminator in the end, that's the idea. So essentially in a nutshell, you create a C string, which is a uh, an array of characters and you always have to allocate one more than you wanna write into it because then you have, if you, if you do it like that, if you initialize it with uh, that uh, assignment operator here, if you do it like that, you need to uh, take into account that you have to add a backslash zero then in the end or that it does that for you automatically if you assign the individual positions by yourself or on your own, you need to add it on your own as well. So now let's go ahead and take a look at what we can do with those C strings. Now, first of all, we can go ahead and just print our size by saying size of text. Now, the important thing is that here you don't get the amount of characters uh, in terms of, you know, the word. So in this case, you won't get three, you're, you're going to get four because the size of the text is four, even though we have the null terminating symbol here that we don't see. 
uh, it's still going to be four because the size of the array is four in this case. And remember, size off gives you the amount of character memory units, which means that if a character, like in most systems, is one byte, you're going to get the amount of bytes. But if a character for some reason is eight bytes and you get a size of two, this means you have 16 bytes of size. It's just uh, a minor detail here. Uh, but essentially, the important thing is you get the size of uh, text when you're using the size of function, of course, if you want to have the string length, which is the length of the or the amount of characters that we have in here, the amount of letters, uh, we have to include the string module here. So we have to say include string dot h. And then we have to go ahead. And instead of size of we're going to use string length. So s t r l e n we can go ahead and run this here. You can see three is the result because we have H, E and Y. We don't have the null, uh, null terminating the backslash zero symbol here. We don't have it. Yeah, we don't take it into account. Of course, we have it. Um, and now we're going to introduce some more functions here. And we're going to get a little bit into cybersecurity, even though this video is called strings. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about hacking. Now, obviously, we're not going to really talk about hacking in terms of, you know, how to do something. But we're going to mention some cybersecurity aspects of these functions, because as I already said, nowadays, we use the string class, we don't use C strings. And uh, one reason for that is because the functions that we have to use with, uh, with C strings are very insecure and uh, have a lot of vulnerabilities or are dangerous if you don't know what you're doing with them. Um, and for this, we're going to introduce the string copy function. Now, this function is very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Why is it dangerous? Because let's say uh, we have some array here. So let's say we have character text and we have, I don't know, uh, 16 bytes for this one. Now, what happens when we call the string copy function? The string copy function essentially takes one uh, one string and copies it into another string into a C string. So what we do is we specify one character array in this case text, for example, this is the destination. And then we also specify what we actually want to save into that text array in this case. Now, actually, let me delete that because I now notice that I have used text two times. Um, so this could be anything, right? We can also go ahead and say, um, actually, I'm not sure how we would do that. But let's say we have, um, let's say we get some input here, like character text 200, or actually we can do uh, text 2 200. Actually, we can do also a malloc, uh, but we haven't talked about this yet. Imagine you have some dynamic user input. In this case, we're just going to say 200, even though it could be dynamic, it could, uh, it could be everything. Let's say we have some input here. So let's say we have this buffer of 200 bytes, and then we allow the user to enter something into those 200 bytes here. And what we enter into those 200 bytes here is going to be stored into the first text array. Now you're going to see what the problem is probably here. The problem is that we're getting an input of up to 200 characters. And the problem is that what we're doing here is we're just getting any input and we're saving it without checking how long the input was or anything. We're saving it, we're pushing it into a 16 bytes array. Now, what this does is not giving you a, uh, it's not going to give you a uh, error message here. It's not going to tell you, oh, this doesn't work because we're out of bounds. It's just going to go over it. It's just going to go over the boundaries. We've talked about that already. So imagine you have, uh, I'm going to do this with uh, smaller numbers. Now, let's say you have four allocated slots for your string array. And now you save something that has eight bytes into it. Now, what happens then is you allocate this, you allocate this, uh, not allocate, you write into this, you write into this, you write into this, you write into this. And what happens then is you write into the next one and the next one and the next one. Now, first of all, it's undefined where you're actually going to end up writing. But the point is, you're going to write outside of your uh, array. And this means that you can also overwrite jump back addresses of functions, you can overwrite other variables. And um, this is something that is exploitable in so called buffer overflow attacks. So the idea is, in this case, this is very low level stuff, you actually need to understand assembly most of the time and not just uh, C. you need to understand what's happening on a very, very low level here. Uh, but the basic idea is, first of all, I have, oh, yeah, of course, stdcn, sorry. Uh, the basic idea is that I'm having the I have the possibility right now to just input some text. And of course, I can go ahead and input hello, which doesn't cause any problems. But of course, I can also input something that's way more than 16 characters long. So let's say I input a a a a a a. Now this is way more than 16 characters. In this case, you know, 
I don't know what happened, right? I could have uh, overwritten a jump back address. I could have uh, just changed the value of something. I could have accessed some memory that I'm not allowed to access. I don't know what's, what's happening here. And the compiler doesn't know either. So it's determined during runtime what actually happens here. But the point is that if I run some software like GDB and I get the memory addresses, I get the structure of the program, I look into it and I check, okay, how does this work? Where are the individual jump back addresses? Where do I need to go? I can inject bytecode into this here. So I can go ahead and figure out, okay, where is this variable? Uh, can I somehow get into it? Can I somehow navigate the jump back address into that array? Can I somehow inject bytecode that allows me to, um, to have some malicious piece of code in that buffer and execute it? And it sounds very hacky and geeky and so on, but it's actually how buffer overflow attacks work. You just need a function like that that doesn't check for the length. And now you have something that's way longer than 16 bytes and allows you to go beyond the borders. And you can just overwrite different parts of the memory, not just the, the text buffer, not just the character array that you are supposed to write into. Using that string, uh, string copy function, you can just write beyond the borders. So this is a very dangerous thing, uh, dangerous thing, and you need to take into account that this can go wrong. All right, so after that long talk about uh, security issues with string copy, let's also talk about string compare and string cat. Uh, what these two functions do is a very simple thing. String compare compares two strings. So we have text and text two. And this function is going to return zero if those two texts are the same. And I think less than zero. Uh, I mean, we can actually look into the man pages here. Uh, man string compare. Let me just see. Uh, it should return less than zero. Yeah, there you go. Returns less than equal to or greater than zero if s1 is less than match or greater than S2. Now, of course, you have to define what less than actually means. So what is one string being less than another one? Probably the length, probably the characters in alphabetic order. But essentially, if this text is less, you know, mathematically less than text two, this would result in a value below zero, otherwise above zero. And if it's the same, if they match, if they're the exact same uh, string or text, we're going to get zero here. And then we have string cat, which stands for concatenate. What we do here is we essentially just say one text and another text, and then we concatenate them. Um, again, I'm not sure if we're going to get this as a return value. So let's say man and string cat. And here we get, uh, yeah, we get the character pointer as a return value. So this means that we're going to get the string, uh, the concatenated string here. So we could say character concatenated, uh, I don't know, 200 equals string cat of text, text two. Now this of course is again dangerous, we should probably say 216. Um, but this is how you can concatenate strings uh, when you're working with C strings here. All right, so now that we talked about the outdated C strings that you're going to still probably encounter as a C++ programmer, let's get to the more modern strings, which are a string class or string objects. So here we just say std string, and we say s for example. Now one thing that you need to know here right ahead is that if you just write string s, this already creates a new object in the memory. Now in Java, this is not the, uh, not the case. So in Java, you would have something like uh, class name, whatever, and then name, then new class name. This is how you do it in Java. This is not how you do it in C++. You don't need to do that in C++ by just saying string s or any class name s, you just create a new instance right away. You don't need to do anything else. Now, however, you can go ahead and directly assign a value as well like that. Or you can go ahead and do it like that std string s2 and then in the parentheses, hello, friends, like that. And we can go ahead now and see out the result to see what we have in those objects. Come on, there you go. And you're going to see hello and hello friends. Good. So now let's take a look at all the things that we did with C strings. How do you do them with uh, string objects? Now, first of all, we got the length. We had the string length function for the C strings. 
Um, actually, let's just find out if we can still use it because I'm e not even sure if that's possible. Uh, string length of s. I don't think actually it's going to work, but maybe it will surprise me. Uh, end line, sorry. Uh, no, it doesn't work. Or does it? No, it doesn't work because you need to have a character array, a character pointer. So what we do here in order to find out the string length of a uh, of a C++ string is we just go ahead and say s or string name dot length. And this is a function or actually it, technically speaking, it's a method that we call onto this object. So this object here string is not or s is not just a string. It's not just a text value. It also has different functions and attributes. And one of them is the length function. And when we call the length function, we get the amount of characters in that string. <clears throat> Again, without the null terminator, at least I think. So let's see one, two, three. If it gives me three, it's without the null terminator. Yeah. And if it would give me four, it would be with the null terminator. So this is how you get the length of C++ strings. <clears throat> then we also have, uh, yeah, one thing that you should also mention here is that we can still index the individual positions. So I can still go ahead and say s at position five, like that. So this still works. Uh, does it work? Oh, maybe I, I got the, the white space. Lucky me. Yeah, there you go. I got the white space. Um, but a technically cleaner way to do it would be to say std c out and then s dot at six. This would give me the same result here, but it's uh, considered to be more best practice, better practice if you want. So if you can use this one and not this one here. So this is how you index the individual characters. And now we also have the functions uh, called compare and uh, concatenate. And for this, we don't even need functions with C++ strings, we can just go ahead and compare them by comparing them. So we can say, if s equals s2, then do something like c out same or something like that. And otherwise, std c out not same. So in this case, we should get a not same because they're not the same. Surprise. And if we change them later on to the same, so first of all, we get not same. And then if I say hello world here as well, we should get same. And we do as you can see. So in C++ strings, we don't need to call functions like string length, string copy or something. We just go ahead and we compare them using the comparison operators. Of course, this also works with uh, less than and greater than less or equal to and so on. And uh, for the, what was the last one we had? The, uh, yeah, the concatenation. What we do for that is we just uh, use the addition, <clears throat> sorry, the addition operator. So what we do here is we say std string combined equals, for example, s plus s2. I think this should work. Let's see if it works. Combined. Surprise me. No, it works. As you can see, this is how you concatenate strings with C++ strings. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and 